Mr. Speaker, sir, the Progress Singapore Party welcomes the introduction of the Platform Workers' Bill as an important first step in improving the welfare of platform workers. There are now more than 70,000 platform workers in Singapore as of 2023. This is a significant portion of our workforce, and many of them are lower income and have been displaced from the job market in recent years. While platform workers generally enjoy more flexibility than employees, they are also subject to significant management control by platform companies when their supply of services are matched to demand by algorithms. It is timely that our legislation is now being updated to create a new class of workers distinct from employees and self-employed persons to protect the rights of platform workers. This bill recognises the need to ensure equitable pay for our platform workers. We support the change made by the bill to align the CPF contribution rates for platform workers and platform companies to those of regular employees and employers for platform workers born on or after 1st January 1995. This is a step in the right direction, which will ensure that younger platform workers have adequate protections for housing and retirement. The opt-in regime for older platform workers also meets the desire of many older platform workers to opt out of CPF contributions on their earnings in order to maximise their take-home pay. However, in order to ascertain that this change will really benefit the platform workers, we would like to ask the government if, if it has gotten commitments from the platform companies that they will not reduce incentives or earnings rates for platform workers to offset their increased cost from paying employer CPF contributions. During the COS for MOM in 2023, my colleague, Ms. Hazel Poir, had raised the issue of whether platform workers who opt in to CPF contributions would be discriminated against because they are more costly, and asked whether measures will be put in place to prevent discrimination against those who opt in. At the time, SMS Kopo Kun clarified that platform workers would not be covered under the upcoming workplace fairness legislation and that it is not in the interest of the companies to discriminate against workers who opt in for CPF because over time, the bulk of the workers available for platform work will need mandatory CPF. However, PSP is concerned that in the short term, there are insufficient protections to prevent Group A workers who opt in for CPF from being discriminated against. We are disappointed that the bill does not contain provisions to prevent platform companies from discriminating against Group A workers. PSP proposes that MOM should regularly receive reports from the platform companies on the percentage of jobs that are completed by Group A workers, as well as the percentage of Group A workers on their platform. MOM should regularly monitor these data points to ensure that there is no evidence of platforms discriminating against platform workers, who may be more costly because they opt in to CPF contributions. We would like to go further to ask MOM to consider proposing the ultimate safeguard of a minimum base fare per delivery or ride share. 
We propose that platform workers can form platform work associations that function similarly to trade unions. A minimum base fare could be negotiated between the platform work associations and platform companies as part of the negotiations on the collective bargaining agreement. The PSP's view is that platform companies and platform work associations should work towards an appropriate minimum base fare, calculated with, with reference to our proposed living wage of $2,250 per month before CPF contributions for 44 hours of work per week. While platform workers are viewed by some as independent contractors, the workers' overall compensation is to a large extent determined by the platform companies. As a result, appropriate policy has to be set to ensure that platform workers are compensated fairly for their services. The 2022 IPF survey, Precarity in Platform Work, a study of private hire, car drivers, and food delivery riders, found that more than 90% of full-time private hire car drivers across all age cohorts were worried that they were no longer able to earn enough money because the financial incentives given by platform companies are increasingly being cut or reduced. Employer CPF should not be another reason for platform companies to reduce incentives for platform workers. Hence, once the CPF contribution regime is implemented in 2025, the government should closely monitor the situation to ensure that platform companies are not reducing incentives or earnings rates for platform workers to offset the higher labour cost that they need to shoulder by paying CPF contributions for platform workers. When deliberating this bill after the first reading, we were of the view that while equitable pay is important, it is also important to ensure the safety of our platform workers is not compromised by the pressure of work. As such, we are glad that one of the key changes made in the bill is that platform companies must now pay compensation to platform workers for work injuries at the same scope and level as employees are entitled. PSP supports these provisions. This is a much better improvement over the voluntary work injury compensation coverages currently provided out of goodwill by platform companies. We also note that the work safety of platform workers will be further strengthened by the draft code of practice for platform services, which the WSH Council has put out for public consultation last week. Under part 4.5.1 of the code, platform companies should limit the load to be delivered to the capacity of the delivery bag and or the maximum load weight of the vehicle or active mobility device. PSP supports this as it will better protect platform workers from, from being exposed to unsafe situations due to excessive loads. However, part 4.5.2 of the draft code of practice does not address the fact that platform workers may feel pressured into accepting jobs during unsafe weather conditions. Because the penalties imposed by platform companies on cancellations. The PSP does proposes that part 4.5.2 of the draft code of practice should be amended to include that platform companies should remove the penalties for workers who reject or cancel orders during bad weather conditions. Such cancellations or rejection of orders should not be included when rating 
the platform workers' performance. This is not an extraordinary step because there's at least one major platform company, Deliveroo, that does not penalise riders in this way. We hope the MOM will consider these suggested measures to ensure that this bill and the code of practice will be more effective in ensuring a safer working environment for platform workers. Mr. Speaker, sir, notwithstanding the clarifications and suggestions made in my speech, PSP supports the bill for country, for people.